Next step then is to actually make our boron. And that's gonna be via reaction with magnesium. So we need powdered magnesium, which we'll mix with our powdered boric oxide, and that's gonna to react to produce our elemental boron and magnesium oxide. Uh, that's the main reaction. There's also uh, side reactions that produce magnesium boride, um, which is gonna be an impurity in our final product, and we'll have to get rid of that later. So in my original video, I did this as a thermite style reaction. And this time around, I wanna try something a bit different, and we're instead gonna use my mini propane furnace here. And that should hopefully heat it up a lot more nicely. And one of the disadvantages with the thermite reaction method is that I do it on top of a bed of sand or in a ceramic flower pot. And both of those introduce impurities that I, it's very hard to get rid of later on. The sand and the uh, ceramic is not gonna dissolve very well in anything. So this way is gonna hopefully give us a bit better purity. So for this step, we're gonna need basically equal amounts of our boric oxide and magnesium powder. The stoichiometry tells us you need very slightly more magnesium than boric oxide, uh, but it's, it's very small. So equal amounts should be fine by weight. So I weighed out four grams each of boric oxide and magnesium powder and put them together. You can see the, the two powders in here. This is a stainless steel condiment cup that I just got from Walmart again. And I'm using a metal crucible this time instead of a graphite crucible, again, with an eye on purity, because if there's any sort of contamination from the stainless steel, that can be taken care of in the acid step at the end. So I need to mix these together thoroughly, and then we'll take them outside and put them in the furnace. Okay, I brought everything outside and the furnace is running and we're gonna put the crucible full of stuff into there and uh, put the cap on it and let it heat up. This is gonna take several minutes uh, while the materials reach their activation temperature and then we should get the reaction to happen and be good to go. Well, it uh, looked like that worked. <laughs> you can see it uh, threw boron all over the place. I mean, there's scorch marks all over my table here. And uh, here's, a, here's a chunk of uh, ejecta, if you want to call it that. And you can see in the crucible here, um, we've got a black material that's in the bottom of it. And there's a bunch of white stuff around the rim. And that's definitely the magnesium oxide from burning magnesium. So that's the white. And the black should be a mixture of boron and magnesium borides. After scraping everything out of the crucible, we ended up with 7.35 grams of stuff. Now this is not all boron, of course, because you can see there's still some uh, white crusts on there of uh, magnesium oxide. And a lot of the black stuff is actually magnesium boride. So we need to get rid of that. And we're gonna do that by adding hydrochloric acid. Um, now, because all of this stuff is mixed together, I need to crush this down into a fine powder so the acid can attack everything. And for this, I can use my mortar and pestle because this stuff is much softer than the boric oxide was, so it's a lot easier to crush. All right, so now I'm gonna take my ground down reaction products, um, put them in a beaker, put them under water, and then very slowly add hydrochloric acid to that. And that's going to react away everything that's not boron. Magnesium boride, the magnesium oxide, any leftover magnesium, uh, and anything that's soluble is all gonna go into solution or uh, come out as a gas. And one of the other things I wanted to point out too, you see on the bottom of the beaker here, it looks like there's stuff on there. Uh, that's the glass itself is actually frosted because uh, the first time I did this, I had a magnetic stir bar in there and I had larger chunks of this reaction mix and apparently it's, it's pretty hard. So it really just uh, frosted the glass up pretty bad. 
So just be aware of that. So we're going to start by adding just some distilled water to this and that's going to take care of any magnesium, theoretically. But now we'll start adding some acid. And you want to do this slowly um, because this is going to produce, the magnesium boride is going to produce borane gas and that's actually pyrophoric. So that means it'll ignite when it touches the air. Uh, so if you had a whole bunch of acid, then you know you could end up in a bad situation. So we're just going to start slow and hopefully avoid borane production. Now, one other thing about this part of the synthesis is that this is going to produce, as I said, boranes. And they, not only are they pyrophoric, but they have a really nasty, like meaty smell is how they describe it. So I'm actually going to be doing the majority of this reaction outside. It's just dark right now, so I, I wanted to show it to you inside first. And here with a close-up, we can see the acid starting to react away some of the products. There's little streams of bubbles coming up. One thing I found out is that this actually takes a really long time to dissolve everything. So I tried this experiment a little while ago and it took a few days of sitting under this acid to react away a sufficient amount of the product. So it's going to take a bit. So I'm going to keep adding acid slowly um, and then until the, the overall solution is very acidic and I'll just keep it out back for a few days. So after leaving the products under dilute acid for about two or three days, um, I filtered it off and dried it, and the weight had decreased. Uh, originally it was 7.35 grams of stuff. After two days under the dilute acid, it was reduced to 3.7 grams of stuff. Now theoretically, we should only get 1.25 grams of boron maximum from what we did. And clearly there's lots of side reactions going on, so I, I don't expect to get really anywhere close to that amount. Um, so we want the acid to keep working until we at least get under 1.25 grams, is hopefully is the target. So after doing that with the dilute acid, I then put the boron mixture back under, uh, this time concentrated acid. This is a 9.5 molar hydrochloric, and I left it there for another two or three days. And that's what we have right now in front of us. And it imparted a very distinct green color to the acid, which is pretty cool. So for comparison, here is the original acid. So you can see that it's already slightly green, but it's clearly much more green now that the, the borons reacted with it. And, and that's pretty interesting. I don't, I don't know what would even cause that green color. But now that we've had it under concentrated acid for a few days, I'm going to take it out and filter it off, dry it, and weigh it again. And we'll see if we're any closer to our theoretical value. So this is interesting. I filtered off that green liquid from the boron mixture and I diluted it by about half with distilled water and the green color is like totally gone. After rinsing and drying the product from the second acid digestion step, we're left with this. This is exactly one gram of products. Since theoretically we should be getting 1.25 grams of boron, that means that this is at most 80% pure. And I suspect it's way less than that in reality since we had so much uh, boride that got reacted away. So a lot of the boron sort of escaped there. But it does look very good. At least it looks better than my old sample. Here it is again for comparison. Um, you know, it's got all that white and red crud in there. So clearly contaminated. Whereas the other one, the new one, looks a good deal better. Now, although this isn't all that pure, I think I'm going to stop here for this video. Just because of all of the research that I've done, it, it indicates that this method is really not great at producing highly pure boron. There may be some extra steps that I can take to try to improve the purity of this, but this video is long enough already. But I'll do a follow-up on that if I'm, if I'm able to actually improve the purity. If you want to read some more about the research that I've done, you can go to my blog, uh, which I'll put a link in the description. And that has other links to lots of other papers that I've, I've looked at uh, and some evidence as to why this particular method is not great at making pure boron. But despite all that, I hope you enjoyed watching the video. So as always, I really appreciate the support of everybody that watches my videos. And thanks a lot for watching them.
So I'll do a follow-up on that uh, if I ever find 